Welcome to the Avery Waytronic Scale System Troubleshooting Video by Scale Tech. The following troubleshooting video follows the guidance of our troubleshooting guide found on our website, www.scale-tech.com. Look under the Training and Support menu and Avery Waytronic section for the PDF version of this guide. This video will demonstrate how to troubleshoot an Avery Waytronic 640, 1040, 2040, and 2060 model indicator that has a 5-pin style base or an amp style base. We will cover different parts and pieces of the indicator and scale system so you can ensure this is the correct guide for troubleshooting your particular scale system. If it isn't, again, check our website for other guides which may apply to your scale system, such as a 4-pin type scale system. The first issue at hand that we will discuss are power supply issues. If you try to turn your indicator on and it will not power, the easiest way to check if it is your indicator is to try another indicator. Even if it is different model, or set up for a different scale system, it should at least power up. Poor connections may be of issue as well. First, disconnect your power cable from the indicator. Take a look and see if there's any corrosion, paint, or dust that may be preventing the connection both on the indicator, port, and the wire connector. Clean them as required and plug it back in. If that doesn't work, check your connections at the power source, most commonly the battery. The wire shown here displays a white wire which is positive, and a black wire, which is ground or negative. You may also have a red and black wire. In this instance, the red wire is positive, and the black wire is ground. If you are unable to resolve your power issues, try another power source, such as a different battery. If you are still unable to power the indicator, call Scale Tech at the number listed below. The next topic we will discuss and troubleshoot are issues in it with inaccurate weight. There are different types of load cell connections available on the Avery Waytronics line of indicators. These can range from 4-way bar 5-pin connectors to 3-way bar 5-pin connectors or a single 5-pin connector. For the example utilized and shown here in this video, we have 4-way bar 5-pin connector style base. You may also have a way bar connection that is called an amp connector as shown here, which is a plastic coarse threaded connector commonly utilized with a junction box or interface cable. Speaking of junction boxes, there are different types. You may have a summing block which incorporates an interface or junction box cable and multiple way bar connections such as a 5 pin connector. You may also have a junction box that allows Waco type connectors which are snap connectors for way bars with tinned connections or you may have a junction box with a printed circuit board with terminal blocks inside for way bar connections with tinned connections. There are more shapes and styles of junction boxes on the market. Just know that the same basic theory for troubleshooting is similar in technique. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get into some troubleshooting. First, disconnect the way bar connections on the indicator. If all the way bar connections go into the indicator, disconnect all of them. If there is only one connection, disconnect it. When you disconnect the way bar input to the indicator and you have a four way bar five pin base, single five pin connector, or amp connector, it will be normal to see plus range on the screen. If you have a three way bar five pin base, you should be able to zero out the indicator. To check the indicators with a plus range on the screen, utilize a paper clip to bridge the connection on one of the five pin connectors. You will need a bridge on pins A and C on the five pin connector. To see a diagram of this, refer to our troubleshooting guide found on our website. If you have an amp connector, you will need to bridge pins two and three. Again, refer to our troubleshooting guide for the pinout diagram found on our website. Utilize a paper clip to bridge the connection. Note, once the paper clip is in place, try not to touch it, as it will change the resistance and metal of the paper clip, which will be displayed as a drifting weight on the screen. Zero the indicator and ensure it stays stable within around 20 pounds. If it doesn't zero or stabilize, contact Scale Tech for further troubleshooting guidance or send it in for repair. If the indicator is found to be in good working condition, the next step is to check the way bars. Remove the paper clip from the connector at the base of the indicator. Connect one of the way bars into the indicator. If you are utilizing a junction box, connect the junction box cable into the indicator and then connect one way bar into the junction box. Zero out the indicator. The indicator should stay stable at or near zero. If it drifts, it says plus range or minus range, displays error, check the cable for the way bar for any bad spots. Repair the cable as necessary by removing the bad spot and splicing the connection. If the way bar continues to have issue, contact Scale Tech for further guidance. 
Next, place weight over the weigh bar. If you have a four weigh bar system, it should weigh roughly three to four times the weight you're placing on it. Step off the weigh bar and it should go back to zero. If it doesn't, contact us for further guidance. Finally, take a hammer and tap around the frame of the weigh bar. Do not tap on the raised can of the weigh bar as damage can occur by doing this. If the weigh bar drifts or is really erratic, you will need to replace the weigh bar. After determining if the weigh bar is good or bad and fixing any bad spots in the wiring, disconnect that weigh bar and connect a different one into the indicator or junction box. Troubleshoot each weigh bar individually the same as the first. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact ScaleTech. We are always happy to help you with the steps for troubleshooting. Again, for more in-depth guidance on troubleshooting, please refer to our troubleshooting guide found on our website under the training and support section. This guide will cover more in-depth troubleshooting of your system and is a good reference to have on hand when you're at your scale system troubleshooting.